All the wires are plugged in. <laughs> Pearl, I don't know if you want to be here. <laughs> Okay, motherfuckers, here's the deal. Um, my uh, tune date on this car is October 7th. Um, and I don't have contour fans. Uh, Ford Blue is uh, shipping those out Monday, so I wasn't going to work on this car today. I was going to go work on the whore. But Justin contacted me and said, What all do you got to do to your car to get it going? And I said, uh, I need my fans, um, put a distributor in, and radiator, of course, and turn the key. And he's got a tune date of this Friday, September 2nd. He said, what if we just switch the days? I'll take yours, you take mine. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't have the fans, and I don't know if I've got time to get it going you know i got to get a tune in here um and he said well i got contour fans that you can use and i guess we're going to try to get this thing started i got no confidence in this thing right now just just simply because i've never put an engine together so i've never been at this point but once it starts i probably will build some confidence so uh, we're going to go ahead and get this stuff in here we're just going to go ahead into the uh, Holly and just switch it over to 42 pound injectors and a 347 displacement. So now I got a trans mount, a real one. So I think that'll do better than that part store piece of crap that's underneath there. And hardware. So I get the old one off there. Speedo's in. Didn't need a new one, just needed a speed sensor because we the other one broke. So Alright, Justin showed up. So guys. And he brought the contour fans. And I immediately cut the tabs off them. <laughs> Brand new you have to on these, but uh getting some cooling in there. I haven't stuck the distributor in yet, and I'm trying to figure out positive and negative on these fans as well. So, just kind of boring stuff. The mount's in. That was a pain. Um, yeah, that's a pain, man. I don't know what the hell. That thing's supposed to be easier because it doesn't have studs. It's got bolts. Well, <laughs> it's because it had exhaust. Yeah. An exhaust uh, hanger in there. That's what yeah. it Yeah, it was... That was, I don't know, shouldn't have been that hard, but it was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not much going on yet, but uh, I know what that fan is. I just got to figure out where's positive and negative on this one. So, Well, guys, we ran into a brick wall. So she's all put together here. I still got to do the wiring on the fans. Don't have no female spades to add to the frustration. But, uh... Uh, when I went to uh, load in, you know, a displacement for this and the 42-pound injectors, the only 42-pound injectors in the Holly system is Holly 42-pound injectors. I don't know what the, the impedance in that or whatever that is. is. These are Bosch-style 42-pound injectors. There's nothing in the software for those. So... Um, I sent a message out to Dan to see if he can help me out with it, but i uh, wait and see if I can hear from him for about that, but for right now, we are, uh, we're done <laughs> for the night probably, because, yeah, what am I going to do? I don't, I don't really know, so I'm not going to go forward with trying to start this thing and having the wrong injectors selected on this thing, not getting fuel or too much fuel, you know, so... Anyway, I guess you'll see me here. And I'm back. All right. Let me show you what I had to do here. So, um, 
and kind of figured things out. All right, so I figured I'd have to do like a custom uh, injector and that's what I did. I watched a video on Leech. Um, he's got like really good information. He goes really in depth with this stuff, which is not something you really need to, I mean, it's important, but not for what I need it for, for just starting this up. So um, what I had to do is put custom up here, bring this up to 42 pound, and this is my fuel pressure right now. I had to take the data card from the injectors and it tells you what to do as far as the voltages on this thing, which is at the bottom here. It's eight, 10, 12, and 14. Well, this one doesn't, it has eight, then it has like 12, but, or no, eight, 10, 12, 14, if I said that right. But it doesn't have exactly 10 and it doesn't have exactly 14. There's like in between numbers there. So I had to input the milliseconds manually up here. And I did it on the eight, the 10.4, the 12, and the 14.4. And then I just like uh, leveled the columns out with a little drop down up there. And what it made this is it made it straight. Well, then I contacted Dan and asked him about it. And he basically said the same thing. But then his went like this. It wasn't straight up. It kind of got that little little hump there. And uh, so I just went off his because mine was straight. I don't think mine would have been bad. But he explained to me what he did up here as far as putting it in. And it's a little bit different. Um, I'm not too sure exactly what he did. I kind of have an idea. But we're just going to go with what he inputted there. I manually put all these in. And uh, now it should be ready to start. So we'll see what happens. Hope it holds together. <laughs> Never put no engine together, man. But uh, yeah, let's try to fire it up. Two, it was way off the timing. She runs. That's a, I think that's an idle issue. he was screwing with that i'll probably have to reset the tps and maybe that'll bring it down i don't know but uh um yeah we're gonna so what we're gonna do is go ahead since the ring's got to run for more than 30 seconds we'll go ahead and compression test and see what it is when 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 it was out of time 
uh, I didn't, you didn't get this on camera, but I told him, I said, hey, let's just click it over until you feel a puff out the first one to get it to get it to a uh, top dead center. And when I turned it over and it finally got to top dead center, that thing went poof. And he said, he goes, he felt that in his face. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this thing might have compression if that's what it did on number one. So, all right, man, there we go. Uh, for now, unfortunately, it's short lived because of my uh, rack problem here. So. All right, so we got a hose. Um, I guess our genius asses didn't realize I got another fox body sitting in the driveway. <laughs> so we went and robbed the line off the old bitch out there in the <laughs> driveway. Now we're trying to figure out how to get this on here because we, see that second, yeah. we might have to take the rack off. We don't know. We're trying to figure it out right now. Because even with a tubular on there, it's kind of a pain. Right where everything's at down there. So, right. yeah. Try. We'll get back to you. All right, guys. There you go. About 135, I think it hit up to. And, uh, yeah, it'll get... I imagine it'll go more. The more these rings get ran. This, like I said, it was only on as long as you saw it until my uh, power steering pump started pissing everywhere, so. Okay, so we got that hose, that hard line, but Ginger's uh, rack and pinion is a stock Ford rack and pinion, so that line was a bit, was kind of short, but my dad was able to bend that in a way to make it fit on here, so we got that taken care of. And we were able to put the timing light on it finally and got it timed at about 12 degrees. And here's a video of that running. As I started up again and kind of was heat cycling it a little bit, you know, let it run to uh, 2,000 RPMs for about a minute, then backing it off and putting it up to like 1,500 and then backing it off. Well, as I was sitting there letting it idle, the temperature just went, so I shut her down. I mean, all that means by 302s, they're notorious for having air bubbles in them, so uh, that was obviously what that was. So. Um, and my dad, in his infinite wisdom, decided to, don't ever do this. He decided to turn the radiator cap, and it started bubbling at the same time releasing air. And I'm like, what are you doing, you know? So he quick got it under control and tightened it back up. But, but just that little bit of air coming out, it started flowing through the thermostat. After I shut the car off, you could just hear it just, you know, cycling through. So... Then we put some more, then let it cool down. I took uh, the radiator hose off. It pissed a little air when I took the clamp off. Put that back on. We were able to take the cap off, dump some more water in it, and it started gurgling back up and we shut it down. So, still needs water, but the thermostat finally opened, so that's good. <laughs> but there you go, man. First start, it's running. Um, it's by all. For all purposes, it can drive. I mean, the only problem is we do got to put some more uh, transmission fluid in it because of all that stuff that leaked out. And again, in our infinite wisdom, we got all gung ho and put the shifter on there last week. So I'll take the shifter back off, dump some ATF in there, and uh, put that back on. So not a big deal, but it's easier access through there. So, and that's it. And then Friday the 2nd, I got Thursday, Friday off, like I said. Throwing her on a trailer and take her down to force and have her tuned. Hopefully, no more problems. But I will take this and kind of drive it around the neighborhood a little bit here after I do the transmission fluid and stuff and make sure that air pocket's out of there and uh, 
get a little mileage on it and then change the oil on it and put some more uh, 15W40 syrup in there. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, there we go. She's running. Uh, hopefully, everything goes well. Thanks for watching, man. Later.